Amen. Let's give God a hand praise right now for all that has happened and the giving uh, that you've given today. We want to thank you in advance for your giving. And if you would see this rebroadcast on another day or another time, feel free to still participate in your giving as we honor the Lord uh, and we praise the name of the Lord. All right, get your tamarinds out, everybody. Uh, get your hands ready. We're going to go into some praise and we're going to go into some worship and we're going to go back a little bit to some old school songs. Some of you have not been in a church building. You have not been in the sanctuary and we want you to go right now to, to praise God with us. We're going back and we're going to sing some old praise and worship songs that we used to sing uh, back in the day. So we want you to grab your tambourine now. Come on, stand up on your feet. Come on, put your hands together. Even the babies, come on. Get your little baby out. Say, come on, let's praise the Lord for a few minutes. You're going to be able to have some old-fashioned church right there in your own home. What you say about Jesus. What you say about Jesus. What do you say about Jesus? What do you say about Jesus? He's all right. What do you know about Jesus? He's all right. What do you know about Jesus? He's all right. What do you say about Jesus? He's all right. What do you say about my Jesus? He's all right. Have you tried Jesus? He's all right. Have you tried? What do you know about Jesus? Right. What do you know about Jesus? Right. Have you tried Jesus? Right. Have you tried Jesus? Right. I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. I'm a soldier in the army. I'm a sanctified soldier in the army of the Lord. I'm a sanctified A soldier. If I die, let me die. If I die, let me die. I'm a soldier. I'm a soldier. If I die, let me die. If I die, let me die. Come on, everybody, just put your hands together for just a few minutes. Come on. Just put your hands together right now. In your home, if you're on your lunch break, come on, just take a break and just put your hands together. Come on. Woo. What do you say about Jesus? He's all right. What do you say about my Jesus? He's all right. Have you tried Jesus? He's all right. Have you tried? Room. He's, right. He's a lawyer in the courtroom. He's, right. He's a heart fixer. He's, right. He's a mind regulator. He's right. Have you tried Jesus? He's right. Have you tried Jesus? He's right. He's all right.
God bless you. God bless you. Clap your hands. If you know he's all right, come on, give him praise. Come on, give him praise. We know he's all right. We tried him and we know for ourselves. And all through the years, God has been good to us. Sometimes when you know he's good, you don't have to ask nobody else. You got your own testimony. You can say, whether well, a matter of fact, I know that I know that I know that my God is all right. And I will submit to you now, you're going to have to be a soldier in the army of the Lord to fight the battle that you're going to fight over the next few weeks is going to take the power of God. It's going to take the might of God for us to stay strong in this hour, to be prepared for what is to come and to know for a fact that our God is greater than all right. He's awesome. He's mighty. Words cannot describe how awesome and how mighty and how wonderful he is praise the name of the Lord to us. Grab your Bibles to the book of Revelation. The book of Revelations chapter number three. Revelations chapter number three to the word of the Lord today. Share, share, share that the word of the Lord is about to go forth. Somebody in this audience needs to hear what the Lord is about to say. Praise the name of the Lord to the church. Somebody needs to hear the word of the Lord that he's about to share and to speak to our hearts today, what a wonderful, wonderful opportunity we have in this time to share the word of the Lord. Revelations chapter number three. I'm going to read verse number seven through verse number 13. Revelations chapter three, verse number seven. Verse number seven through verse number 13. Revelation seven. Verse number 7 through verse number 13. Praise the name of the Lord. When you have it, please say, praise the Lord. Verse number 7, and to the angel of the church of Philippi, write these things, says he who is holy, he who is true, he who has...
has the key of David, he who opens and no one shuts and shuts and no one opens. Know your works. See, I have set before you an open door that no one can shut. Please outline, underline an open door. Everybody just say door. And no one can shut it, for you have a little strength. You have kept my word and have not denied my name. Indeed, I will make those of the synagogue of Satan who say they are Jews and are not, but lie. Indeed, I will make them come and worship before your feet. And to know that I have loved you because you have kept my commands to persevere. I will also keep you from the hour of trial which shall come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth. Behold, I come quickly. Behold, I come quickly. Hold fast what you have that no one take your crown. He who overcomes, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God. He shall go out no more, and I will write on him the name of my God, thy name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which comes down out of the heaven from my God, and I will write on him my new name. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the church. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the church. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. And this morning, for just a few minutes, I want to use this text to raise a subject for our sermon today. And for a subject I would like to use, the building is closed, but the doors of the church are still open. The building is closed but the doors of the church are still open. Uh, somebody just uh, say that out loud or place it in the comment section and just say the doors are still open. You may use another phraseology and say we are still open. The church is still open. The church is still open. For, for Christians and most of us that are tuned in believe in Jesus. We regularly attend worship services. The experience of meeting together is a part of our spiritual rhythm, of our work, and, and also of our lives. The habit of worshiping together is actually encouraged in scriptures. Many of us have attended worship services almost every week for as long as we probably could remember. We may even have a favorite seat in the sanctuary that we think belongs to us. Even when we miss church, for some reason, it's always reassuring to know that when we are returned to church, we are warmly received by our friends and our pew partners. In more than 30 years, I can count on less than two hands the number of times I've actually canceled a worship service. This is what makes the present moment seem so unreal. And as much as this breaks my heart, I want to ensure everyone around the world that the church is still open. How can the church ever close? The, the church meets in a building, but the building is not the church. The building is our sanctuary. The building is our tabernacle. The building is our physical temple. The church is the people who make up the congregation. So the church cannot close. The church is wherever we are. The church will not close if we are somewhere serving God. As long as we're somewhere giving. As long as we're somewhere praying. As long as we are somewhere worshiping the church is still open. I do not want to minimize the value of gathering as a church community. What we do on Sunday is important for so many reasons, worshiping and 
the gathering is spiritually uplifting to us, and it is a public witness to the glory of the Lord. At the same time, I do not want us to miss the opportunity that we have while we're going through this season to take the church to the next level. Let us not miss the opportunity that we have in this season of taking the word of the God and the gospel of Jesus Christ unto the world. Just because we're not meeting in the sanctuary does not mean that the church is closed. Because we are not meeting uh, in the sanctuary does not mean that the work of God is not going on. It reminds me of verse number 8 in our text when he says, I know your works. See, I've set before you an open door, and no one can shut it. Today's message from Revelation is the message Jesus sent to the church at Philadelphia. The message has really three applications. The first message applies to the actual church at the time of the writing of the letter. The second application is to an era of actual church history. And the third is how their experience and message applies to us today. The seven churches represent seven different church ages, beginning with the times of the apostles and concluding with the time of the rapture. Philadelphia represents a time period when great evangelistical movements had revived the church. Revival had moved the church forward as never before. The church uh, was able to present Jesus at this season to numerous people. That opportunity has been described as an open door that no one had the ability to shut. The church of Samaria and the church of Philadelphia are the only two churches in these seven letters where Jesus had no correction for them. Verse number seven, and to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, these things saith he who is holy to he who is true. The message from Jesus is directed to the church pastor. It is his job to preach the message to the church. Jesus is called he who is holy, he who is true. The Bible says also in the book of Hebrews, chapter number four, and verse number 15, the Bible describes Jesus. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are yet without sin. Indeed, Jesus is holy. The Bible says in John chapter 14 and verse number 6, Jesus says, I am the way. I am the truth and I am the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. There are, my brothers and sisters, many false religions based upon the lies of the world. Jesus always spoke the truth and only he can provide a way to heaven. Let no man, no woman, no preacher, no rabbi confuse you there is only one door to, to, to heaven, and that door has to come through Jesus Christ. Jesus is the way, Jesus is the truth, and Jesus is the life. There is no way around it. You must come through Jesus. You cannot come through Confucius. You cannot come through Muhammad. You cannot come through the sun god. You cannot come through the cow god or the moon god. You cannot come through Mother Nature or Father Universe. There's only one way. That one way comes directly through Jesus. Whatever you do in word or deed, the Bible says, do it all in the name of Jesus. And the church said, praise the Lord. Jesus said, he has the key of David. What does that mean? We find the, the revelation to that in Isaiah chapter 22 and verse number 15, also 19 through 22, when he says there in Isaiah 22, 15, Thus saith the Lord God of hosts, Go proceed to the steward of Shina, and who is to cover the house. 
This person held a position about to be given to the righteous Elohim, who was the gatekeeper of the royal throne room. He was in charge of who was allowed to enter into the presence of the king. In other words, he had the key. He had the full authority to open the door for worthy people to enter or close the door if people would not be in the room. When he opened the door, no one had the authority to shut the door. He had, my brothers and sisters, the full authority, praise God, to close that door to unworthy people. And when he shut the door, nobody could come around him and open the door. Jesus tells the church at Philadelphia, he said he now had the key of David. Jesus, in other words, is saying, I have the full authority to open the door. I have the full authority to enter into the king's presence for those uh, I deem worthy. Verse number eight says, I know your work. See, I've set before you an open door. Jesus is saying, I am opening a door. Praise the name of God. I believe that we are in a season, church, where the Lord has opened a door for the church. He says, I'm opening the door, though it's COVID-19. I'm working through this, and I'm opening up an effectual door. He says, the door that I have opened. He says, no man can shut the door. For he said, you have a little strength. You have kept my word, and I have not denied my name, and have not denied my name. Jesus knows they've worked hard at spreading the gospel. Uh, the Christians at the Church of Philadelphia had a tremendous opportunity by leading other people to Jesus Christ. And that is, church, a challenge for us today. All of us have opportunities to tell others about Jesus. What are you saying, Bishop? I'm telling you that the church door is wide open. Jesus has said, I've opened an effectual door of opportunity. The building is closed, but the church door is wide open. Hallelujah to God. Do not get deceived because we are not gathering in the four walls of a mortar building. Do not get deceived that the church is closed. The church has never been brick and mortar. The church has never been about having four walls. The church is not a building. That is the temple. But the church are the people who populate the building. And that means that wherever we are, the church is represented. Praise God. If you're on your job, the church has been represented. If you are in the community, the church is represented. When you're in Walmart, the church is in representation. Look, look again at verse number eight, for you have little strength. My guess is that the congregation of the church of, uh, of Philadelphia was small. It's not the size of of the church that mattered to Jesus. However, there's probably another application to the phrase. It wasn't easy, in other words, being a Christian back then. In other words, they had little strength because they had become persecuted. They were being talked about. They were being ridiculed. False religions were gaining a lot of followers long after all that area and that part of the world had succumbed to Muslim control. Philadelphia held out as a Christian location until about 13 uh, 92 persecution in the text had begun to wear them down. He said, you have a little strength. It would have been easy for that church of uh, Philadelphia uh, to deny their faith in Jesus and just succumb to the other religions. But Jesus had no condemnation for the church. He said, you've kept my word and have not denied my name. Can I help you as a church? Do not lose the word and please don't deny his name. You may not be in a church building, but you've got to keep your faith. That is, my brothers and sisters, uh, a challenge for us today. The question is, are we keeping his word? Do we have the courage to speak up for Jesus? Do we have the courage to stand up for Jesus? The Bible, the Bible says in the book of Matthews, chapter number 10, 
and verse number 33, for whoever denies me before men, him I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. Verse number 9, indeed I will make those of the synagogue of Satan who say they are Jews and are not, but lie indeed, I will make them come and worship before your feet and know that I have loved you. The Christians at Philippi were loving people. However, some Jews, much like the Pharisees, were not at all loving toward the Christians in that era. They were saying that even God didn't love them because if he did, why would a loving God cause you to suffer the way you are suffering? Notice, though, if you're reading the text, Jesus says they were lying Jews uh, that were and worship would become uh, the synagogue of Satan. Jesus promises that one day these mocking Jews would fall uh, at the feet of the Christians and acknowledge that he uh, indeed loved them. And then verse 10, if you drop down, he says, because you have kept my command." To persevere, I will also keep you from the hour of the trial which should come upon the whole world to test those who dwell upon the earth. In spite of their little strength, this church had remained faithful. And the Bible says because of their faithfulness. Hallelujah to God. Because they had stayed faithful to God. Can I encourage you to stay faithful? Uh, if you were at church, I tell you, look at somebody and tell them, remain faithful. Uh, I know the trial is here, and I know the church is being tested, and I know we're, we're out of our comfort zones, and I know that you may be discouraged, and you may have fear, and maybe there is some doubt that has entered into your heart. God sent me here today to tell somebody to remain Remain faithful. Jesus promises to keep them from the hour of the trial that was going to come upon the whole world. He said in verse 11, behold, I am coming quickly. When Jesus comes back for his bride, the church in the rapture, the Bible says that he is going to come, everybody say quickly. The book of Romans, the Bible, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians, Verse chapter number 15 and verse number 51, it says, Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Now the church ought to start shouting now, for this corruptible must put on in corruption and this mortal shall put on in mortality. I want everyone to just blink your eyes for a minute. Just blink your eyes. How long did that take? It took uh, just a fraction of a second. That is how quickly Jesus will appear in the sky. That's how quickly he's going to call his people home. The Bible said that the dead bodies of those that sleep in Jesus will be resurrected into new glorified bodies and united with their souls that have been in heaven. They will meet Jesus in the air and will be taken unto heaven. Then his faithful followers who are alive and remain will be caught up to meet Jesus in the air and taken to heaven in their glorified bodies. I don't know about you, but I can't wait until the moment that I hear the trumpet of God sound and to catch us out of this old world. What a day of rejoicing it's going to be when we all see Jesus. We're going to sing and we're going to shout and we're going to claim the victory. What a wonderful day it's going to be when we can wave goodbye to all of our troubles. Wave goodbye to all of our sickness. Wave goodbye to all of the pain. Wave goodbye to all of the misery and the tears. Wave goodbye 
to all of the sickness and viruses, wave goodbye to all of our bills and depression and, and discouragement and oppression, wave goodbye to all of our trials and wave goodbye to all of our enemies, wave goodbye to all of our haters, here it is, wave goodbye to this whole world, uh, give me Jesus, uh, you can have this whole world, but give me Jesus, I can't wait. Hallelujah, I got excited to that great getting up morning when I'm able to see Jesus. I love the verse number 11 when it says, hold fast to what you have. Come on, somebody just say it and put your preacher voice on and just say, hold fast. Hold fast to what you have. Those words, hold fast, are translated from the Greek word. It means to hold on and to seize. It means to hold on and don't let go. I feel the Holy Ghost. It means hold on with a bulldog tenacity. It means that no matter what comes to try to talk you out of it, don't let nobody hallelujah, talk you out of it, hold on, hold on to what God has given to you, that same word appears in Matthews um, chapter 9 verse 25, when Jesus takes the hand of a young girl dead on the bed, and the Bible said he raises her to life, it is used in Matthews 12 and 11, where Jesus talks about pulling a sheep out of the pit so Jesus is telling the church to hold on tight uh, to what you have y'all missed it hold on don't let go uh, tell somebody close to you hold on uh, and, and don't let go uh, hold on no matter my brothers and sisters what tries uh, to pull you out of the church don't let nobody pull you out hold tight Hallelujah to God. Uh, hold tight to what God uh, has given to you. Uh, can I say to everyone who's hurting, to those who've had enough uh, 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 of undeserving pain, that uh, uh, for those that have been through hell and high water, for those that have been in the hospital, for those that have someone in the hospital, for those that are suffering right now, I came to tell you, don't let go. Uh, I promise you that there is hope for the hopeless. Uh, no matter what's going on in your life, no matter what's going on in your family, God sent me here to tell you, do not lose hope, but to hold on and hold fast. Uh, praise God to what God has given you. It gives a picture of gripping and holding on to God. Uh, some think that God is holding out his hand and we are the ones that have to hold on with all of our might uh, and God does very little. I don't think that's what he's saying. Uh, God said, I'm going to do the greater work of holding on to you, uh, but you've got to participate and hold fast to my hand. Uh, are y'all listening to me? God got you. He's, he's got you in his grip. Uh, I felt the Holy Ghost send me to tell somebody, uh, I'm I'm in his grip. I'm in his grip. Uh, look at somebody and tell him I'm in his grip. I'm in his grip. Ah, uh, uh, yeah, he's holding on to me because if he wasn't holding to you, you would have backslid a long time ago. I wish I had a church. If he was not holding on to you, you would have lost your mind this time last year. The only reason some of us are still saved is simply because he was holding on to you when you let go of him. Aren't you glad, believer, that when you let go of his hand, he did not let go of your hand? Somebody ought to jump up off your couch and shout right now because Jesus is still uh, holding on to you. Uh, he held me when I let go. He held me when I sinned. He held me when I lost my faith. He held me when I would not even wanting to come to church. He held me. Uh, uh, we ought to give God a praise break for just holding us. Uh, praise God in his hand. I, in last night's study, heard about a plant uh, in the plant world there are plants who hold fast uh, onto objects like rocks. 
their root system is called uh, hold fast. Uh, many people associate hold fast with seaweed. Uh, if you've ever attempted to pull a piece of seaweed from a rock, uh, you can understand the name of the plant structure. We will typically tear the seaweed apart uh, before forcing it to let go. Uh, because when seaweed hit a rock, uh, it has a root system called hold fast. In other words, uh, the whole nature of seaweed uh, is that it's on a rock in an ocean uh, and the ocean waves are blowing against the rock and every second uh, a wave hits the rock to cause the seaweed to let go but the seaweed uh, would not be able to live without the rock so the seaweed don't let go of the rock uh, even though the waves are blowing up against it because its root system is hold fast. Uh, Y'all missing what I'm saying? You've got to be like seaweed. Uh, you've got to have a root system called hold fast. Holding fast uh, to everything God has given to us. Can I tell the church? Uh, we've got to hold fast. Uh, look at your neighbor and say, don't you dare let go. Uh, we've got to church hold fast to our profession. Uh, we've got to fight the good fight of faith. We've got to hold fast to our confidence. Uh, we cannot lose confidence though the world uh, is going crazy. We've got to hold fast to uh, sound words. We, we've got to hold fast to that that is good. That's what he's telling us to do. He said hold fast to uh, your profession of your faith. Uh, and lastly he says you've got to hold fast uh, until the end. I don't want to bother you much now and I know uh, we're practicing social distancing uh, and so you may not be able to shake nobody's hand like you're going to shake it off and you may not be able to touch nobody as you would normally touch anybody uh, but will you just do a, a, a elbow bump for me uh, and just look at somebody and say whatever you do uh, I don't care if it's an elbow bump from across the room just uh, tell them whatever you do uh, tell them hold fast until the end uh, tell them don't you dare let go uh, tell them you've been through worse trials than this God delivered you before uh, and if God delivered you before Praise the name of God. Uh, I came to be a witness this morning uh, that the same God that brought you out before, uh, he is the same God uh, that's going to bring you out again. Uh, uh, if he's done it before, uh, he will do it again. Uh, I feel a little churchy now. You know uh, the old song we used to sing every time I turn around. Uh, he keeps on making a way. Have I got a witness out there? Don't forget what y'all testified. When you were in the church building, you would stand up and say, can't nobody do me like Jesus. When I was a little boy, I stand up and say, when I think of the goodness of Jesus, I'll have church all by myself uh, and all that he's done for me. Uh, I say my soul cries out hallelujah. Uh, what are you saying Bishop? No matter what comes your way. Uh, look at the devil in the eye and say uh, hallelujah anyhow. Uh, never let your problem get you down. Uh, when your problem comes your way, uh, lift your head up high and say yeah. Hallelujah anyhow. What are you saying Bishop? I'm telling you to hold on. And when life hurts and dreams fade nothing can help you like hope. Tell your neighbor, say oh neighbor, tell them you gotta keep hope alive. You cannot make it without hope. And without hope prisoners of war languish and they will die. Without hope, students will get discouraged and they will drop out of school. Without hope, athletic teams will slump and keep on losing. Without hope, addicts return to their habits. 
married couples uh, decide to go for divorce. Uh, and entertainers and artists uh, and entrepreneurs will lose their creativity uh, without hope even preachers uh, and strong Christians will struggle to press on. Uh, without hope uh, you will not be able to hold out to the end. Uh, but I need you to look at somebody. Uh, look at them in the eyes and say neighbor them. Ha, tell them whatever you do. Ha, tell them don't lose your hope. Y'all ain't gonna help me preach. Ha, look at your neighbor and say neighbor. Ha, whatever you do. Ha, don't lose what God said. Ha, tell them hold fast. Hallelujah to God. I hold fast. What am I holding on to? I'm holding onto the hand of Jesus. I'm holding onto the hand of the creator never doubting never complaining I'm putting on the whole armor putting on the whole armor putting on the whole armor of God onward Christian soldier march on I'm determined to conquer in Jesus, never running from the battle, but I'm moving straight ahead. I made up my mind, come hell or high water, I'm not turning back, I'm not losing focus, I'm not going to lose the war, and if I was going to give up, I would have gave up a long time ago, but I'm in it to win it. I wish I had a church now. Look over at your neighbor and say, oh, neighbor. Say, I'm in it. I'm in it to win it. Y'all scared now. Look at your neighbor and say, oh, neighbor, if I was going to quit, I would have quit last year. Tell him I've been through too much hell to walk out of the church now. Look at one more neighbor and say, oh neighbor. Tell him the God I serve. He's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all I can ask and above all I can think. I feel the Holy Ghost in here. I came to tell somebody. Tell him say hold on just a little while longer. Tell him he that will come. Tell him shake Shall come and will not tarry. Clap your hands, everybody, and say, I believe I'll hold on till the end of the battle. And no matter what your situation is saying, I can tell you right now that God is at work. I can tell you right now that He is able to do exceedingly and abundantly abundantly above all you can ask and above all you can think hallelujah lean on your neighbor and say neighbor whatever you do tell them don't you walk out of here but tell them hold on to the hand of God have I got a witness in the house God told me to tell you that a turnaround is coming yes a turnaround in the spirit is coming to your house and a turnaround comes when you hear a word from the Lord. Look at your neighbor, say neighbor. Tell them all you need is a word from the Lord. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of the Lord. Who's talking to you? Whose report will you believe? I will believe the report of the Lord. If you're going to be fruitful, if your marriage is going to work, if you're going to live 
if your words are going to have power, you got to speak the word of the Lord. Prophesy the word. Declare the word. And if you can speak it, your situation is going to be turned around. If you believe it, shout yeah. Shout yeah. Shout yes. And God said, in the beginning, that the turnaround comes when you hear what the Lord is saying. It ain't over until God says it's over. Look over at your neighbor and say, neighbor, it ain't over until God says it's over. And I don't know what your future holds, but I state with all certainty that I know who holds my future. And if you thought it was over, you ought to make up your mind and declare with certainty it ain't over until God says it's over. Your marriage is not over. Your family is not over. The church is not over. Your business is not over. Your dream is not over. Your hope can come back. Keep on fighting. Keep on praying. Keep on fasting. Keep on pressing. Keep on progressing. Keep on moving. Keep on reading. Keep on interceding. Keep on believing. Keep on trusting. Keep on trying. Keep on travailing. Cause it ain't over until God says it's over. Keep on giving. Keep on worshiping. Keep on dancing. Keep on shouting. Keep on fighting until the victory has been won. And when you don't know what to do, lean on Jesus and just hold on to his hand. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, whatever you do, don't quit. Don't walk out. But tell him, hold, 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 hold on, hold on to his hand. Hold on to his hand and keep hope alive. Keep hope alive. Clap your hands and give it praise. Clap your hands and give it praise. Clap your hands and begin to shout. Clap your hands and tell somebody, hold on. of God. Hold on. Just a little while longer. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, whatever you do, whatever comes, whatever comes, look it in the face and say, I cannot, I will not, I shall not be moved like a tree planted by the rivers of the waters I shall not I will not I cannot be moved come on storms come on rain come on trials come on tribulations when it's all over I said when it's all over I'll still be standing for God I live and for God I die Satan, if you thought you were going to kill me, if you thought you were going to wipe me out, if you thought the storm was over, I've 
got news for you. I won't quit. I won't bend. I won't vacillate. For God I live. And for God I die. Yeah. Yeah, Lord. I know Satan. He thought the church was going to be destroyed because of COVID-19. He thought the church would not worship him. And that the word of the Lord was not going to go forth. But I made up my mind. I'm going to praise him anyway. I made up my mind that there's nobody and there is nothing that can stop me now. Satan, the blood of Jesus is against you. You thought you closed the church. You thought you killed the church. You thought you destroyed the church. But I came to tell you that Jesus said, upon this rock, I would build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I don't care what happens in your life. I don't care what occurs in your life. There is nobody that can stop the church. The church is still open. Can y'all share that with me? The church is still alive. The doors of the physical church have been closed and has been limited. But the real church is still open. And we're unlimited. And just in case, just in case, the devil don't understand. Not only are we sitting at home, but we're about to come and get all of our stuff. The Bible, the Bible, the Bible says that the kingdom suffereth violence, but the violent take it by force. I don't know who lost some stuff, but I came, I felt the Holy Ghost. I came to tell the devil we're coming back to get all of our stuff. We're coming back to take all of our stuff. Lean. Yeah. Lean on your neighbor and say, oh, neighbor, go get your stuff. Whatever, 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 whatever the devil has taken, go back and get your stuff. I'm getting my mind back. I'm getting my family back. I'm getting my stuff back. I'm getting my job back. I'm getting my place back. My children will be saved. My husband will be saved. And every sickness in my body has got to leave my body because I got authority to take it back. Find three people and give them an elbow nudge and tell them the church is still open. Healing is still occurring. Salvation is still free. Yes, and our God is still, he's alive. I need a church now to just tag a few people and tell them he's alive. He's alive. He's alive. He's alive. He's alive. He's alive. He's alive in my heart. He's alive in my spirit. He's alive in my family. He's alive in my city. He's alive in my church. He's alive in my heart. He's alive in my house. He's alive. He's alive. He's alive. He's alive. Yes. 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 He's alive. Woo! He's alive. I said he's alive. Oh, 
all over the world, Jesus is alive. Not by power, nor by might, but by his spirit, saith the Lord. Everything that we're doing, every place we've been, we should recognize that Jesus is alive and the church is still open. The physical building may be closed, but the church is still open. We're vibrant. We're alive. We have our faith. We still believe God. We believe that there's no spirit, no disease, no pestilence, no war, no political upheaval, no economic situation will be able to separate the church from the love of God. We, we believe that upon this rock, he built the church. And we believe that the gates of hell cannot prevail. It's coming. It's here. The church is being tested. But we're going to survive the test. Not through our own power, not through our own might, but by the spirit of the Lord. When my heart is overwhelmed, David said, lead me to the rock. Lead me to the rock that's higher than I. That means sometimes we don't have the strength. As the church in the Philadelphia, they didn't have the strength. He said, I see your strength is becoming weak. I see that you're struggling. But because you kept the faith, can I encourage every one of you now, do not lose the faith. You look at CNN and they'll say, oh, this many people have died and this many people are going to die. And your faith will sometimes say, well, maybe, maybe we're losing. We're not losing church. We're gaining ground on Satan. It's just a, it's just a, a, a deterrent. It's just a deception. It is something that has come to distract you from really believing that the church can never fail. Because if the church fails, he fails. And he's a God that cannot fail. <laughs> Thank you, Holy Ghost. He's a God can, that cannot lie. He's a God, he's a God that says, if I said it, it settles it. He said, if I declared it, it settles it. There's no devil in hell can stop what God is about to do. The church buildings are closed, but the church is still open. I hope you hell heard the doxology of the message when I told you to hold fast. Church, hold fast. Hold fast to what we've been taught. There's still one Lord, one faith, one baptism. Hold fast. Hold, hold fast of, that the baptism in Jesus' name is the correct thing. Hold fast that in filling of the Holy Ghost is mandatory. Hold fast to our faith. Hold fast to teachings about Jesus Christ. Hold fast to our teachings on holiness. Hold fast to our teachings on integrity, morality. Hold fast to the faith, to the teachings, to the banner, to the blood, to the foundation. Hold fast. Don't let the bloodstained banner fall to the ground. But somebody in the church got to stand up and say, I'll be counted worthy. I will hold fast to that that I've received. And I will not let the devil by any means detour or subtract from that that God has given to us today. Come on, put it in the comment section and say the church is still open. The church is still open. The church is, as long as God is in your heart, the church is still open. As long as you know him as your personal savior and you're still connected with the God from heaven, the church is still open. And wherever you are, the church is because you are a representation of the church. You are a representation of who Jesus is. Because if you have the Holy Spirit, Jesus is living inside of you. I want you right now to clap your hands wherever you are. Just give God praise in your homes and on your jobs, in your car, just right now, just start praising God right now and give him praise, give him honor. You know, you want to thank God right now that the church is, the church is still open. And because the church is still open, that means the altar is still open. And wherever you are right now around the world, there may be someone, pray church, someone right now listening and said, Bishop Harrison, this sick, sickness and epidemic, pandemic, disease, virus, situation, whichever way you would want to describe it, has caused me to recognize my humanity. It has me recognizing and thinking about eternity. And if you're here today and you have not 
you've been baptized in his name, repented of your sins, received the gift of the Holy Spirit, you're living beneath your privilege. Right now, what would happen if you died and you were not a part of the church? What would happen if you connected with this disease and you would pass, but yet you had never received Christ and never been saved? Or you a backslider, you decided that this was a season you were going to go party. But then this happens. If I was a backslider, it would make me consider right now my ways because I would say I thought I had time, but when you saw this sickness, it reminded you that if there was ever time to get your life right, the time is right now. I don't want to condemn you. I don't want to seem judgmental, but I want to help you. I want to help you know with confidence that if something would occur, Lord forbid that it would, but if it would occur, you would be ready for the rapture. Now, if you are listening to me right now, and you have not repented of your sins, or maybe you haven't been baptized in Jesus' name, or filled with the Holy Ghost, there is a number on that screen right now. There is a number listed. I want you right now to go and call that number. Now, don't wait. Do not even wait. Even while I'm talking, you feel the urge. You know I'm talking to you. Young lady, you can feel God saying it's me. I need to call. Young man, you can feel God saying it's you. You know who I'm talking to. When you feel the unction of the Holy Spirit, pick up that phone and call. Call that number. My prayer counselors are on standby right now. And what they're going to do, they're going to answer your call and they're going to pray with you and give you direction. You say, I don't know what to do. They're going to help you. They're going to lead you to that path. They're going to give you the answer. Jesus is the answer. He is the way, the truth, and the life. So if you're here right now, you say, I'm a backslider, Bishop. I have once known God, but I have turned from him. I've lost the connection and relationship. Would you right now go call that number? Call that number right now on your screen and say, listen, I heard bishops right now and I need to make sure that I connect because I may not get a chance to come back to a physical church over the next couple of weeks to get it right. So I've got to do what I got to do today. I believe if you make that call, God's going to honor the call. He's going to honor the call. God told me to tell you, pick up the phone right now. He's going to honor the call. If you're here and say, well, Bishop Harris, I've never been baptized in Jesus' name. I was baptized as a kid or I was baptized young before I've even committed sins, but I have not, since I've been an adult, been baptized in his name. If you have not been baptized in the name of Jesus and you say, I want to be baptized, I'm telling you that the church is still open. We're still baptizing people in the name of the Lord Jesus. All you have to do is pick up that phone. We're going to give you direction, hook you up with a church that can baptize you right now in the name of the Lord Jesus. But you have to pick up the phone. There may be somebody thirdly that want the Holy Ghost and say, Bishop Harris, I've been to church and I've repented. I've been baptized before, but I have always desired to have the Holy Ghost. Do you know you can get the Holy Ghost through prayer? Just calling. If you want the Holy Ghost right now and you say, I need the Holy Ghost, I want the power of God. The power of God is that dudamus. It is that, that power that keeps you, helps you walk right. He's the governor. It's the Spirit of God living inside of you. If you've never received the Holy Ghost, will you get to that phone call and pick up that phone and will you call right now that number come on call the number right now and say I want to give God my life come on church this is altar call this is we're, we're broadcasting all around the world people can could be looking at this broadcast in foreign countries I want you to know that Jesus is the way he's the truth he's the life and it takes a lot of faith to even if you're in a building to walk down the aisle it takes more faith to pick up the phone and make a phone call to call somebody that you don't even know and you cannot see. But this is the way God has given to you today. So you have to have courage to pick up your phone, call that number. On last week when the program ended, I was able to answer some calls and I was able to pray for some of you. Uh, and it was a blessing and honor to be able to pray you through and to, to, to teach you about Jesus Christ. We're going to be doing the same thing today, even after the broadcast, if you call. I'm going to get on the prayer call line and pick up some calls and pray for, with you as well. But you don't have to wait for Bishop Harris. You can call right now. Somebody is waiting on you now to call and say, pray for me. And you may be a believer. My last a petition is for those that are saved, but you've lost some hope or some faith. Or you may have somebody that's sick. Right now, you don't have even the time to go get a COVID-19 test. You, you say, well, I don't even know how. Listen, we don't even need the test. Call the number. By his stripes, you're healed. I believe God can heal you right now. But you got to make that call. You say, well, Bishop, I've just lost some faith and been discouraged and have been out of church and not had personal prayer. You can receive personal prayer today, all day today. You can say, I'm saved. Call and tell them I'm saved. I just need somebody to, to agree with me in prayer because I'm nervous about what's coming. I'm nervous about my family. 
Call that number right now. And I want you to call and I want you to ask for prayer. I believe God is going to bless you. He's going to keep you. He's going to preserve you. And he's going to put the blood over your life and cover you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. What a wonderful opportunity it is and has been today to share the word of the Lord with you and to, to minister through song and to, to do the preach word of God today. What a blessing it was and is to be in the house of the Lord to worship the Lord with you. I pray today that you have heard the word of the Lord today, the, that the blessing and the service have been a blessing unto you and that it has lifted your spirits. Listen, do me a favor right now. Do me a favor right now. Just take a moment and just begin to thank God right now for an opportunity to worship. There are people in different countries don't even have access to, to even live stream a service. Won't you thank God for the opportunity? If this service has been a blessing to you, if it has been a blessing to you, will you go and sow a seed? Some of you came on later in the program. Some of you may have just joined the program. Uh, go to Cash App, dollar sign Praise Covenant CA, and I want you to go sow a seed right now. Come on, sow a seed because you want the church to stay open. You're going to tell devil through your so the seed that you sow that our church is going to remain vibrant, going to remain relevant. It's going to remain connected. It's going to remain open because we're going to see, for, see it, that it does by sowing seeds into the kingdom of the Lord. We love you so much today. Remember that this coming Tuesday, 4.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time is the Praise Covenant's Combined Bible Studies. And then next Sunday is Easter Resurrection Sunday. You are invited to come and be a part of our resurrection service. We're going to have such a wonderful time in God as we share the word of the Lord through the preached word of God and the ministry of the word of God with you on next week. All right? We're ending our service today, and we love you and thank you for joining us. Now go now. Make that phone call. We'll be looking forward to praying with you and believing God for you. Remember this today. We walk by faith and, and not by sight. And remember that everything is going to be all right. We're praying for you and with you as we go through this upcoming week together in prayer, in faith, and in belief. From the sanctuary of Praise Covenant Church, Fairfield, California, we're signing off. And we thank God for you joining us for our Sunday morning worship celebration. God bless you. God keep you is our prayer. Have a great evening.